Hello, I'm Deb Bussinger with the Leesburg Public Library. We are so excited to host David Latassi today. This program is a partnership between Florida Humanities and the Leesburg Public Library. And the funding for this program was provided by Florida Humanities and sponsored in part by the State of Florida Department of State, Division of Arts and Culture and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. I'd like to introduce you to David Latassi. He is a paleontologist and expert formerly with the Museum of Science and Industry in Tampa. He has been interested in fossils and prehistoric times since he was eight years old. And thus he has had 60 plus years experience searching for fossils all over North America and Asia. After serving in the Navy, he decided to travel around the United States to collect specimens from well-known fossil sites in Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Florida, as well as Canada and several countries in Asia. After he married his wife, Suzanne, in 1972, she began to travel with him. In 1976, they moved to Florida where it was possible to collect saber-toothed cat fossils, his main field of interest all year round. Latassi worked for Great Explorations Museum in St. Petersburg and assumed a number of duties, including designing and curating exhibits, and later worked at the Museum of Science and Technology in Tampa. While at the museum, he led cave explorations for children and adults to the Dames Cave in the Withlacoochee State Forest, as well as fossil collecting trips to mining sites in Polk County. Since retiring from the museum in 2007, he has been active in projects with the historic Hernando Preservation Society. Latassi is on YouTube, and you can find his videos by searching David P. Latassi, and then either paleontologist or archeologist. Welcome, David Latassi. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the Leesburg Library uh, to have invited me for this program for the Florida Humanities. It's an excellent series of programs, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy this one today. Um, also, uh, I'd like to say Deborah has been very helpful and just excellent in putting this program together. So thank you so much, Deborah. Uh, also, um, we'll start this program. You should see on your screen uh, that it says Florida's prehistoric heritage. And so this program is going to really cover not only what our prehistory was like, but a great deal about the people who were involved in uh, actually discovering what our prehistory was like. Uh, for nearly a, a century and a half, uh, a lot of amateur collectors and uh, professional people would go out looking around in caves and in the rivers, and they would find fossils. In fact, it's not unusual in Florida to find fossils like a mastodon tooth, or every now and then, even uh, some like big bone, like this huge fossilized horse bone. So it's very easy to find fossils in Florida. But for a long time, uh, the problem, eh, let me see here. I'm getting a continuation sign I have to get rid of. Whoops, something happened. So stick with me. Let's see. Whoops. We had a little screen glitch coming up here. There we go. We should be back on full screen. Does everybody see it? Can you hear me, everybody? Let me see. There's always little technology things that happen. We are all muted, David, but we see your first screen and the presentation slides on the left hand side. Right. And I'm trying to get rid of that. Okay. That's and I've lost oh, there we go. Now I've lost my. Okay, let's see if we can get this. Okay, there we go. For some reason we got a little icon screen that came up there and wouldn't get off. <laughs> so I had to clear that and then we ended up starting over. Okay, so Florida is at one time about, oh, 25, 35 million years ago, according to geologists, uh, Florida was actually an island state. Uh, Florida predominantly before about 40 million years ago was mostly underwater. And so when you find the rock formations here in Florida on the surface, you can go back about 50 million years when you find a rock. 
In fact, uh, especially through West Florida, like in Leesburg and around Citrus County and Hernando County and along the upper uh, west coast of Florida, the rock layers that are exposed on the surface are called the Alcala Formation. And they date about 35 to 45 million years ago. And these are marine sediments. And then the sand and clay that has actually been washed up over Florida over the last 30 million years are sand and clay deposits that were formed during hurricane and weather erosion and buildup. So most of the fossils that we find in Florida that are above that limestone layer are, are the early land animals and everything that's below it are marine animals. And you find like uh, sea urchins and animals like that, like this little sea urchin up here. So if you go fossil hunting in the mines locally around Leesburg and around uh, the other west coast of Florida, uh, it's very easy to find these little marine organisms. Uh, during this time, we find early whale fossils and early manatee fossils in that marine environment. But the land animals are actually found above that in clay sediments and the sand layers. And they're usually washed into sinkholes and river systems. And this has been a real problem for paleontologists in the Eastern United States for over a century and a half. And they started finding fossils in the sinkholes here approximately around in the 1860s through about the 1880s by the first pioneers that were coming into Florida. Now, when you look at the sedimentary rocks here in Florida, it looks like a sandwich. And of course, this sandwich, the oldest rocks or the bottom of the sandwich is in the very bottom layers. And you can see in this picture here, uh, they represent some like little bit backbones and the dead fish up here in the middle layers. And then as you get up to the more recent layers, because the sedimentation as it builds up, it, you go from the oldest layer that's lowest up to the top layer. And the problem with that here in Florida is that we don't have that well-defined what's called stratification or layering of one rock over the other. So that makes it very difficult for the paleontologists over the last century to figure out what time sequence and what animal belonged to what age or time period here in Florida. So this has been an ongoing story in Florida. And over the years, people, uh, famous scientists have been coming into Florida and trying to figure out the rock layers here and how they can associate it to the rock layers that they find out west. Because when you go out past the uh, west of the Mississippi River, uh, you can find rock layers that are spectacular. And if you've ever gone to Wyoming, Colorado, and Utah, you can go along the mountain ranges and you can look up on the mountains and you can see those lines of layering and those rock formations. And you can go up there with a the pickaxe and you can knock out the little fossils in each, each one of those layers. And you can pretty well figure out which animal was first and the fossils will tell you from one layer to the other what was here. But Florida's not that way. Florida here is like you get a sinkhole over here, animals get buried in it and die, leave their fossils, and it's very isolated. There's nothing to relate to it in the rest of the state. So a paleontologist came in here and they started studying the animals that are found in these deposits. And so by finding you know, the little kinds of bones that you see, like in the photograph here in the center, uh, they'll batch it to whatever animal was most closely resembles it or identical to it that's found out west. And by this process, then you can kind of determine what age levels that these animals were found in, in an isolated sinkhole or a river here in Florida. Now, one of the earliest fossils that was found here in the 1880s is a very spectacular fossil. And it was actually named after this particular animal. It's called Smilodon, which is a saber-toothed cat. And all of these are pretty much uh, familiar with the saber-toothed cats. Uh, most people like to call them saber-toothed tigers, but they're not really directly related to uh, actually uh, tigers. Tigers are a modern cat that's very, very uh, specifically different than the saber-toothed cats. They're not 
directly in the exact same family. They're in the family of cats, but that's about it. They're very different from one another. Now, as you can see in this photograph, this skull that was found here in a sinkhole near Ocala in 1889 is far from complete. Uh, it has a lot of sections of it missing. And unfortunately here in Florida, that's the kind of thing you see in Florida is that you find partial skeletons and partial bones. So it takes the scientists a lot of work to kind of figure out just exactly how the animal really look or what the animal's actual bones uh, completely look like. So there's a lot of restoration work involved in these fossils. But this one here was very significant because it told scientists that some of the fossils here in Florida went back during the ice age because this cat was an ice age animal. And it was well known before this, uh, there was a fellow a scientist in, uh, um, he was in uh, University of, uh, of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania and in Philadelphia. And his name was Joseph Leedy, and he was considered one of the first paleontologists here in the country. And he recognized this as a new form of saber cat and called it Smilodon fatalis. So, and it's actually, uh, it's actually when he named it, he called it Smilodon floridanus. In other words, the cat from Florida. But now scientists have revised this name because there's other cats that are more similar to it out west that happens sometimes. We lose some of our names, but we've got a lot of species here that have been named in the last hundred years that are really endemic to Florida. That means they started out, lived here. We don't have any other evidence other than in Florida. One of the early uh, fellows that was really interested in the fossils here in Florida was a Dr. E. H. Sellards. And he lived in Vero, Florida. And he liked to dig along the canals looking for fossils. And this was around 1915, 1916, about World War I, over a hundred years ago. And one of the things that he came up and discovered was the skull of this prehistoric man. And this skull was actually mixed in with the bones of Ice Age animals like camels, tapirs, horses, mastodons, uh, animals that are extinct. And at that time, during the 19, early 1900s, most of the scientists, especially the archaeologists, really didn't believe that early man lived during the Ice Age here in North America. They felt that the first Native Americans originated from the Eskimos and came over only about 4,000 years ago. And so when Dr. Sellids, and he wrote this wonderful paper, it was just excellent paper. And it's been reviewed recently by a lot of archeologists and paleontologists. And they're finding out that Dr. Sellards was 100% right. And that this Vero Beach man uh, over in Vero, Florida on the East Coast of Florida, that canal, has a, a layer of ice age fossils with human remains have been found. Unfortunately, this was the only skull that was found and some other bones. And since then, they haven't found any evidence of human fossils. But so now scientists have come into Vero and they're starting to dig that same area now. And they're trying to find more evidence as Sellards came up with. Now, another area here in Florida that started the development quite early in fossils is the phosphate industry. And the phosphate industry took off here in Florida around 1881 through 1915. And so uh, geologists came into Florida and they started knowing in the river, noticing in the river systems here, like the Peace River, that there was accumulation of fossil bone. And when you find animals like bird bones and fossil animal bone, that bone breaks down and it creates a material called phosphate. In fact, bone has a, actually a calcium phosphorus in it. That's a natural development of our bones, human bones, animal bones, all bone. And when that disintegrates and breaks down, it leaves a phosphate trail or phosphate deposits. And the neat thing about phosphate is it makes really great fertilizer. You know, I mean, if you had one of your chickens die, you know, and you dumped it in a compost heap and you mix it up and you planted your plants in it, your plants grow really well. So this phosphate was really important. And so here in Bone Valley, and you can see on the screen to the left, the picture of Bone Valley, the, the areas that they dug for the phosphate 
in those early days, and even today, are right around Bartow, just south of Bartow on US 60. And you can see those green areas on the map to the left as where these drag lines, like the one on the right, would dig, dig up literally um, millions of tons of cubic sand and clay here in Florida. Now this layer of phosphate and fossil bone goes back uh, about 5 million years. And scientists started studying the bones from the drag lines. And they found that a lot of the animals that were in this deposit were at critters like bone-eating dogs, earlier saber-toothed cats, and very interesting camels and horses and gomphotheres, which is a kind of an elephant. <laughs> it's a little different than a mastodon or, or the modern elephant, but it was a very primitive animal. So the phosphate industry was really important with the development of scientists coming in and finding fossil vertebrates. Now here you can look at a map of Florida. And when you look at that little ridge, it looks like the spine of Florida. And this is an early phosphate map. <clears throat> you can see that the blue areas are the hard phosphate. There were two forms of phosphate in the sinkholes and up near Leesburg and other areas like Gainesville and South. Most of those are what are called hard pan phosphate. It's really in a very hard rock. And so it was limited in how much they could actually excavate that. It had to be crushed, at, crushed and it was more expensive to process. Now, if you look further South near Polk County, that, that would be the red splotchy area in the southern part of the state. That's called soft phosphate, and that's in a real soft clay. And that's what they've been mining over the last 75 years here in central Florida. Unfortunately, the phosphate industry here in Florida is kaput. Uh, we don't really have much phosphate mining any longer. One of the rare animals that was found uh, in that deposit in the phosphate is this strange animal that looks like a giraffe. It's called Kyptosaurus amatorum. And it was actually found by an amateur fossil collector in phosphate beds by a fellow by the name of Frank Garcia, who'll be on this program a little bit later on the slides. And he found this skull and it's very closely related to an animal that lived out in Nebraska about 30 million years ago. This one's not quite that old. This one only goes back five to seven million years. But this is what the scientists here in Florida were looking for. And a fellow by the name of Dr. Dave Webb had been really working on this bone valley fauna or formation to see how it related to the animal fossils out west, like in Texas and Nebraska. Now, one of the most common fossils you're gonna find in Florida is in the marine deposits, these wonderful giant shark's teeth like Carcharodon megalodon. And this is the giant extinct great white shark. And the largest one that's ever been found in the state here by locals, a fellow by the name of Dr. Gordon, uh, Gordon Hubble actually has the, a specimen that's almost nine inches long. It's eight and through eight and seven eighths inches long. And this particular shark tooth is the largest one known and scientists have been estimating these megalodon, megalodon teeth to be for one inch of tooth, 10 feet of shark. So do the math, that was probably a 90 foot shark. It's almost mind boggling to even imagine a shark that large. The mouth radius, you could, would probably could bite off the front of a school bus. That's how large it was. So these were a, a, a classic fossil. And one of the best places to collect these in the state right now is Casperson Beach, just south of the Sharky's restaurant in uh, Venice Beach. In fact, my wife and I were just down there last week looking for shark's teeth on Venice Beach. So if you want to find some of these teeth, go down to Casperson's Park right on the coast near Venice, south of Venice. And it's right across from the airport. And you can actually find all the shark's teeth you want to find. And here's a little example of one. This is pretty interesting. Yes, that was an elephant. <laughs> that would be a gomphothere. And as you can see by the, the mouth on the elephant, this elephant was called a shovel-jawed elephant gomphothere and was one of the more primitive elephants that lived here in Florida during that time period. Uh, we think that these big giant sharks 
uh, like the Megalodon lived here about mostly around 7 million years ago. They were quite common. And we think that they lived here so much. So they're so abundant. Of course, teeth, these sharks teeth, they grow continuously through their lifetime. So they lose literally thousands of teeth in each animal, but they're abundant everywhere here in Florida, the shark's teeth. And these animals were probably living on the different kinds of whales that were living here in Florida during those that shallow sea that was here. The other group of animals that's in this same deposits from that 7 million years ago are strange animals that scientists have recently discovered, like at the University of Florida. It's been doing a lot of research work on these fossils here in central Florida. And you can see in the left-hand lower corner of uh, the giant tortoises that lived here in Florida. Some of these were six feet to seven feet across. And these tortoises would get as large as uh, a Volkswagen beetle. So they were really quite large. And the two animals that are fighting over the dead carcass on the right are what are called bear dogs. There were actually some animals, carnivores here, they were very strange. They were like half dog, half bear. They're, they're no longer in existence today. So we have a number of animals that, are, that we found in the fossil record that are actually extinct. They're no longer living anywhere in the world for that matter. And then the other animals in the background that are kind of center stage and gray running to the left, those are rhinos. So rhinos were very common here in Florida and rhinos are re related to horses. And that we have more horse fossils here in Florida than pretty much any other kind of fossil other than the megalodon teeth. It's very easy to find fossil horse teeth in central Florida. Uh, you could be walking along a road cut almost anywhere in Florida and find a horse too. Uh, there were at least two dozen different kinds of genus and species of prehistoric horses living in Florida. And a lot of you are probably familiar and know that the Ocala area is still famous for its horses. We have many, many horse ranches. And for some reason, scientists believe that because the mineral contents in the soil here in central Florida is really good for raising horses, the grass and the nutrients that these plants bring up from the soils here in Florida are absolutely perfect for raising horses, even better than Kentucky. Kentucky raises a lot of great horses, but we got them beat every time. <laughs> okay. Now, one of the sites that was found by famous scientists uh, from the American Museum of Natural History was called the Seminole Field Site. And this site was found in Pinellas County, Florida. So it's kind of as far west and central portion of the state. And this uh, photograph is from the 1920s, and it shows the field crew of these highly paid workers at that time uh, digging up the fossil bed that was found at Seminole Field. And it was an Ice Age site that was really famous. And the fellow that worked on it was uh, Simpson, and uh, he worked on it because he got a tip from staff at the American Museum of Natural History uh, in New York. And uh, fortunately, one of the guys, the head paleontologist from the uh, American Museum that worked in the Gobi Desert uh, expeditions, the Asiatic expeditions, 1922 to 1930. Actually, his mother lived on St. Pete Beach. And so when they found this site, the locals found this Ice Age fossils, he said this was really important. And so he notified uh, George Gaylord Simpson about the site. And so Simpson came down and started working on it. Now this photograph here shows the site approximately 40 years later in the 1960s at Joe's Creek is where this is at in, in, in uh, Pinellas County. <clears throat> it's on 28th Street and 41st Avenue. So you can still find this site in the creek bed. I don't think anybody's ever really been collecting fossils on it for half a century. But this team here that you see in this picture were the scientists that actually were working this site in the 1960s. So Walter Granger is the fellow on the left. And he was working at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And the fellow on the right, uh, Roy Chapman Andrews, was a janitor <laughs> at the American Museum. 
uh, lofty position, you know, a paleontologist, as a janitor. But the interesting thing about Roy Chapman Andrews is he was kind of like Indiana Jones. And I'm sure you're all familiar with that movie. And he was considered the Indiana Jones scientist of New York at the time. And the reason for that is that he worked for the CIA before it was the CIA. It was intelligence in the military for China in World War I. And so he knew all the diplomats and he knew all the who's to know in China at that time. And so when they wanted to put together the Asiatic exhibit, because Granger thought the first human fossils and earliest prehistoric people came from China. Well, actually we know now they're from Africa with Leakey's work, but Chapman put together this Asiatic expedition. And because these two guys became friends, they both, the Christmas that they were staying at uh, Walter's home, mother's home, these uh, locals here in Pinellas County brought the fossils in and that's why the site became so famous and was excavated by the American Museum of, uh, in New York. And here's a picture of George Gaylord Simpson. He's the guy that actually dug the site. And this is what the site looked like in 1929. Now you can see in the background of this picture, there weren't too many housing developments in Pinellas County at that time. It looks a lot different today. In fact, this spot, it's all buildings and streets. It's completely covered with homes and buildings. And back then it was scrub oak and pine. And there was a little bit of citrus and there wasn't much else. There were just some pioneering families back then. Now, the reason that this site in Seminole Field was so important is out in California, they found this site called the La Brea Tar Pits. And the La Brea Tar Pits were the same age as this site in Pinellas County. So this site from Seminole Field became North America's premier site because it was very similar to the La Brea Tar Pits, the same age geologically. The fossils from this site, now determined by scientists today, go back approximately 13,000 to about 28,000 years old. So uh, geologically, it's relatively recent, but the interesting thing, there were all these prehistoric animals from this deposit. Now, this is what La Brea looks like today. And the lake is actually over a layer of asphalt. It's a it's an oil seep. It's a Miocene. It's about a 7 million year old uh, Miocene clays and sediments where oil has oozed up through vents into, into Los Angeles County. And these vents bubbled up there at, at La Brea Tar Pits. It was very famous with the colonial people. They would pitch and make tar out of this oil and sand for the roofs. So that would seal things, keep things waterproof. And they kept finding all these bones in La Brea tar pits. Now, another site here that was found that Simpson also worked because he's one of the most earliest premier paleontologists working in Florida was the Thomas Farm. And this was a ranch a little north of Gainesville, just north of Fort White. And this site was actually accidentally excavated and uncovered by a rancher plowing his field. And he ran into a bunch of big bones and he wondered what in the world were these? And he sent one off to New York and Gaylord Simpson looked at it and said, wow, you got some really important fossils here. So he put together another team in the early 1930s and he started digging up these fossils from the Gainesville area and particularly these very early Miocene fossils. These groups of bones and fossils go back even earlier than the Bone Valley fossils, much earlier than the Ice Age fossils. These go back at least 17 million years. So you can see what's happening. As these sites are being discovered, the scientists are now collecting all the bones, looking at what kind of horses, what kind of animals were living in this deposit, here in Florida, and then they would cross sample it with the fossils that have been well known out west, like in California and Montana and states like that. And then they were able to determine 
that this layer of fossils was the same age as the one in California or in Oregon. And that way they had a better geological age reference to go by to say how old these fossils were here in Florida. So that's how they did it. It's much different than the geology that we have out west. They have it much easier than the Florida paleontologists. Some of the animals he found was this really strange little horse. This horse was about the size of a German shepherd. It's called Archaehippus, and his skull and its teeth are on the left photograph. It was a very small horse. Back then, 17 million years ago, the horses were very small. The bear dogs, like the one you saw previously that were fighting over the carcass. Uh, this dog was called Amphicaion. And this bear dog, the skull is nearly two feet long. It was a very large animal, much larger than a grizzly bear. But it was more closely related to a dog than it was a bear. And they were first found here in, in Thomas Farm in the 1930s. The other animal that was found and still under study was found in the Suwannee River by a friend of mine. And this fossil was found by Harry and Phyllis Miller. And it was a giant pig that was found here in the Suwannee River in the early 1980s. And this animal was found, they first thought it was actually a mastodon or an elephant, it was so large. So we actually find giant pigs here in Florida, which is really amazing to think that a pig would get the size of an elephant. And one of the most premier fossil collectors in the state of Florida was because this gentleman, Ben Waller, started scuba diving during World War II for the Navy. And when he came home after the Navy, in the 1950s, he started scuba diving the rivers and the sinkholes here in Florida. And it opened up a whole new world to paleontology, to the fossil paleontologists here in this state. So Ben was a amateur. He was very knowledgeable and he was just excellent collecting fossils. Most of the important sites that we have here in Florida in the 1960s and 70s came from this gentleman's discovery. And he was just a, you know, just an amateur. Paleontology wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the avocationalists going out and collecting and looking for fossils. But this is a picture of Ben and below him is a upper jaw that he found in palate region of a mastodon and one of these hairy elephants lived here in Florida, probably about a million to two million years ago. One of his most famous discoveries is this giant bird, and it's called a terror crane or terror bird. And if you watch Prehistoric Planet, National Geographic, and a lot of the science channels, every now and then you're going to see about the terror cranes uh, walking with prehistoric animals series. This bird reached about seven to nine feet tall and lived here in Florida. And its main domain was around Leesburg and Citrus County. It was a local animal. And it's the closest thing that we have to a living dinosaur that ever lived in Florida. And this fossil goes back about two and a half, three to four million years ago. And the only places it's ever been found as a fossil is central Florida and one toe bone in Texas, that's it. And the family called for orchidae, don't ask me to spell it or pronounce it for orchids. I've heard it pronounced a million different ways. It was a group of rare extinct giant birds that live from Antarctica to South America. There are even some examples in Asia and Africa. And the most recent one lived in Florida, Titanus walleri. And the name Walleri is named after Ben Waller. And it's found in the Santa Fe River, just north of Gainesville, the Withacoochee River, which isn't far from you all guys, and also the Wacasissa River, the Asilla River, and the Suwannee River. And that's it. Other than that one little bone in Texas, most all we know about this giant bird was right here in Florida. So it's just an amazing fossil. One of the best fossils found of it here was on Citrus County on US-19, 
when you go across the barge canal, if you threw a rock off the bridge, that's where that Titanus walleri fossils were found. And Dave Webb was the guy that recognized this. So Dave started researching the fossils in the rivers here in Florida with Ben Waller. In fact, Ben taught uh, Dave Webb to actually dive, scuba dive. And Dave actually came from um, out west, Nebraska and uh, Kansas. He was uh, educated in Kansas and he got his degree, his uh, doctorate in the University of California. And Dave came to Florida and worked for the University of Florida and started the first paleontology program for graduate students here in the state of Florida. And he partnered with Ben Waller and Ben would take Dave out to the various river sites in Florida. And they started discovering these wonderful animals that lived here over the last several million years. Dave was a very good friend of mine. Unfortunately, Dave passed away last year. Not COVID, but he uh, had other issues. Wonderful man. I knew him for about 45 years here in Florida and we worked on many projects together. This is a site in Inglis where they found Titanus walleri and where that crane is digging up the clay right along the bridge there on US 19, that's where that bird was found. North America site, the Inglis site has giant armadillos. You see the one on the right, it's about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, <laughs> very giant animal. It's related to the armadillo. Uh, we believe it was some kind of a grazing plant eater. And we have found evidence of these things in South America, where they believe that some of the prehistoric people during the Ice Age could actually kill these and eat them. And then they could live inside, <laughs> inside the shell. It was so large. And when you find these, this fossil here in Florida, the, the scoots, the outer shell of this animal, are little round bones that are fused together. And when they, when they actually deteriorate in the soil during decomposition of the animal, these, these shells fall apart. And so when you collect in the river scuba diving or along the shoreline, you may find one of these scoots from this giant, it's called a glyptodon. So it's a very unusual animal. Uh, one of them, one of the animals, this one not in the picture, it doesn't, but some of them had a club, a spike club on the end of the table, tail. And so we feel that it could swing back and forth and keep a saber tooth cat from biting it or whatever. I don't know what the cat could get a hold of. It was mostly all bone. And then the lower jaw on the left was uh, from this site here in Inglis in Citrus County. It was the only, only hyena ever found in North America. So that, that's another rare fossil that was found right here in central Florida. And it walked through your backyard at one time. This is what the hyena looked like. It's found in Inglis and Swanee River down to Port Charlotte. I know it's from Port Charlotte because I have the second known jaw of this animal in my collection and we found it in Port Charlotte. And the hyena jaw to the left, which is the upper jaw, was found in the Santa Fe River. So this is how we figure these things out. One of my favorite sites here in Florida was discovered by a rancher in 1974 called uh, Love Bone Bed. In fact, it was found by Pat and Ron Love, a couple that bought an okra field. And while they were plowing their okra field up, they actually found uh, the bones from this prehistoric rhinoceros. And this rhino is about, oh, roughly 10 million years old, eh, maybe nine and a half, 10, roughly that age. And when they found these bones, they were really surprised. So they took it to Dave Webb at the University of Florida. And Dave looked at him and says, these bones kind of look pretty important. Maybe we should go out there and check this out. And sure enough, that site produced an entire bone bed. And the University of uh, Florida had dug this site from about 1974 to about 1979. And they had found literally 40, 50,000 50, fossil vertebrates. 
at this site, thousands and thousands of fossils, including this really strange animal called Barbrophilus lavorum. And you see the last name on it, Love Orum. That's after Ron and Pat Love's name. They named that cat after Ron and Pat. So if you're a, a fossil collector and you happen to find something new to science, uh, most of the scientists, when they write the paper, if you discovered it, they will name it after you. A good friend of mine, Barbara Fight, discovered a new saber-toothed cat in Bone Valley, and they named that new cat Rhizosmilodon. Fight Eye after Barbara Fight, a good friend of mine. Now the next thing, this cat is really strange. It's not related directly to any cats living today. I would call it more of a, a cat-like animal. It's very strange. But they found two skulls of this cat here at Love Bone Bed. And this is the site they're digging on your right. This is what it looked like when they were excavating. This is what the site looked like 10 million years ago to your left, this false saber-toothed cat killing rhinoceroses along the edge of an old river. And I was very fortunate. I came up to the University of Florida in uh, 1984, and I talked to them about the love bone bed. And they said, well, we're not digging there anymore, Dave. And it's open public land now. Would you like to go dig at it? And I said, well, sure. So for two years, I went to this site myself and dug up more fossils from this site. And so my collection that I have of these rare cats came from those two years of digging when I was there. So I was able actually to work on this site as well. Another site that I was able to work on, see the, the story is I'm old enough, I'm starting to get into the first half of the collecting here in the state of Florida. Unfortunately, when you go up to Gainesville and you go to the Florida Museum of Natural History, which is a wonderful museum, it's the Powell Building, uh, half the fossil there, I was kind of involved in either excavating or researching the fossils here in Florida. So I am an old fossil. So in your little screen you're looking at, you're already looking at a fossil. <laughs> but this one of the sites I worked in the 1970s is called the Kellogg Fill. And it's on Bocasiga Bay, remember Pinellas County, uh, where they found the Seminole Field site. Well, this is directly related to the Seminole Field site, same age. And all it was was dredging fill that was pumped on shore and used for building material. In fact, this is a picture of the VA hospital. And the site is just a little bit to the left bottom screen where they dredged the material out. And I was, it was the first saber cat fossils I ever found here in Florida. But this was a site related directly to it. Now these sites like the Kellogg Phil produce fossils like prehistoric taper. Tapers were very common here in Florida. <clears throat> in fact, they have a fossil taper that was found in Vero Beach on the East Coast with the same evidence of human remains from Vero Beach in 1916, that this taper dates to the same age as that Ice Age material on Vero Beach. And Kellogg Phil is the same age. We found Macedon fossils by the dozens of teeth. Giant bison was found on this site. Some of the horn cores are six to eight feet long on the giant bisons that we find here in Florida. <clears throat> the, another Smilodon cats, like the one from California, that they now have a different name is called Smilodon fatalis. And sabers, and I found a saber like the one on the left. In fact, there are very few sabers of saber-toothed cats from the giant saber, the cat that lived here at the end of the Ice Age. The cat saber on the right is actually a saber cat that was found in Warm Mineral Springs near, uh, near Sarasota in a spring hole. In fact, many of you may have actually gone down to Warm Mineral Springs. It's a resort and it's a hot water spring. So you can actually soak your body in there and get rejuvenated like the Soto thought. And so this is a really important uh, find, the saber. And the saber on the left was Vero Beach. And the one I found in uh, Kellogg Phil are about the only three sabers we have now in Florida from that cat. 
Hale Quarry is another site. A friend of mine found this site uh, in the 1980s. He was an amateur collector. And uh, when he was walking along in this quarry, he found a red, red patch of clay, reddish orange color. And he thought it was a modern dump site for pigs because he kept finding pig jaws all over the site and thought it was just a rancher had butchered some pigs. He brought them up to Gainesville and realized that these were actually prehistoric pigs. And then a, a friend of mine by the name of Larry Martin decided to start collecting with a couple other collectors at the site. And when he was digging in the first two hours that he started digging, he found two skeletons of this saber tooth cat, one of the rarest cats ever found in North America. Another site that's really famous here is Lysi Shell Pit. And this was found near Ruskin. And it's just south of Tampa on Tampa Bay. It's called Cockroach Bay. And this was found by the guy on the left, Frank Garcia in the 1970s. And it's a shell pit. And a lot of the shells that were washed in from hurricanes here in Florida are deposited in layers. And during that time period, about 2 million years ago, these fossils were buried in this fossil shell. And so they were watching the fossil shell being removed commercially by Bud Lysi's team. Lysi owned and operated the shell pit for roadbed material. They crushed this stuff up, this shell, and put it on your driveway out in the country. So that was why they were digging this shell up. And Frank was noticing a, a layer of bone was being exposed on one of the walls and he discovered this famous bone bed. And that bone bed is 2 million years old. And it's, one, it's now considered the largest bone bed of that time period ever discovered in North America. <clears throat> the skull on the left is a saber cat skull that Frank uh, found. And it was an ancient river estuary. So we believe that these cats were crossing the rivers and the alligators and crocodiles would grab one and pull it under. So this is the reason why we find a lot of horse fossils, camel fossils, saber cat fossils, baby elephant fossils like the Macedon and mammoth were killed along this river and their bones were deposited because these animals were crossing where there were alligator holes full of alligators not too unlike Florida today. So things haven't changed that much, only the characters that lived here in the past. Another site that's famous in the 1980s was excavated by the University of Florida crew called the Moss Acres site near Ocala. So this isn't very far from you guys either. They found rhino and camel and horse partial skeletons. And it's very rare in Florida to find partial skeletons. You might find a whole backbone. Another animal, you might find the entire leg bones. You know, a lot of skulls like this giant e uh, otter called Enhydrotherium. It's a very rare animal and it's the most complete skeleton and skull of this giant otter was found right here near Ocala. And this otter was about four to five times bigger than the modern river otter. When it stood up on its hind legs, it was tall as a person. So it was a very, very large animal. So you can see from the evidence that we have here, there were animals like this that lived out west, but there were a lot of animals here in Florida that were unique to Florida that have not, not been found out west. So we have a very unique geology. The geology and the paleontology of Eastern North America is somewhat different than from out West. And that was because of the habitat and what animals could live here. And we all had also had what was called the interchange from South America to North America. And there were animals like the giant Glyptodon, the armadillo, they were migrating from South America up to North America. The big Titanus bird was probably migrating from South America to North America because the most of the fossils of those giant terror birds were found in South America. And here you see a kind of a scene of what's called the Oligocene period. And the Oligocene period is the rarest fossils, land animals found in Florida. And there was one 
site that was found on I-75. It's one of the first overpasses south of Gainesville, just north of Payne's Prairie. And it was found by a geology student. He was working at the University of Florida and he found the first late Oligocene fossils that were 27 million years old on I-75 when they were building it, when I-75 was first constructed in the 1960s. One of the most more recent fossils that was found here in Florida was one that I was involved with. It was a horse called uh, Archaeohippus. And this early horse was actually found in uh, Curlew Creek near Clearwater, Florida. And the horse teeth and bones you see here in the picture, a fellow, a friend of mine, Chris Skillman, knew me as a paleontologist when I worked in St. Petersburg at Great X Museum. And he brought this in to me and he said, Dave, I found this horse, this fossil. I don't know what it is. And I looked at it and I said, well, it's a fossil three-toed horse. It's a primitive horse. This horse is only the size of a German shepherd. So I knew it was an early horse. So I told Chris, I said, well, where'd you find this horse? And he said, well, I found it in Curlew Creek in Clearwater. And I said, no, it's from Nebraska or Wyoming. No, Dave, I found. So he took me to the creek and he showed me the rest of the horse skeleton where it was located. And he actually had found most of the skeleton of this three-toed horse. And I believed it was probably from either Myohippus or Archaeohippus, a very early primitive, the first horses that started grazing or eating grass very early. And Dr. Bruce McFadden, the guy on the left, he's world famous for these fossil horses up at the University of Florida in Gainesville. One of the most premier fossil paleontologists in the world on horses is Bruce McFadden. And so Bruce and I looked at this fossil and I kept saying, well, he said myohippus, and I said, well, it still could be archaeohippus, because <laughs> we weren't exactly sure at the time. And then a fellow came along that needed to do a graduation paper for his master's dissertation. And he, I met him in the office one day up in Gainesville in the paleo lab. And he said, Dave, what would be a good paper for me to write on? And I said, well, you better write up Chris Gilman's horse because it's new to science. So he said, I said, I think it's an archaeohippus, but talk to Bruce and Dave Webb and they'll tell you about all about the, what they know about this horse. So he researched it for a couple of years and he wrote a paper on it and I got lucky. <laughs> it was actually archaeohippus. So it's a new horse called archaeohippus manulis. And if you want to see the fossils that we worked on, they're on display in the University of Florida in Gainesville. So you go look at this fossil that I helped work on. I can't claim I discovered it, but I was the first one to recognize what it was. Okay, so these were what they were like, these little tiny horses that ran over North America. And we think that these little horses here in Florida, because they're so early, are what we call our, uh, island hopping, because these were just an archipelago here in Florida. It was little chains of islands, and even central Pinellas County, which is interesting, because this horse was found on a 90-foot elevation in Pinellas County. Yeah, how many 90 foot elevations are there in Pinellas County? You know, it's mostly like four feet above the water level. So this horse is, was the earliest horse, one of the earliest horses ever found here in Florida, at least 27 million years old. And another site that I was fortunate enough to get involved in was the Millennium Park Bone Bed. This was found on 74th Avenue North and 125th Street in Pinellas Pinellas County. You can tell a lot of my stuff was found in Pinellas County. Uh, we worked quite a bit. And of course, Pinellas County, there's just tons of fossils. You can go, I can go almost anywhere down there in Pinellas and find fossils. There's just everywhere. And so this little creek bed was found by a little girl. Uh, she was down there hanging out with her friends in the Millennium Park. And she found a, ma a mammoth tooth. And so uh, the park rangers called me up when I was working at Museum of Science and Industry. And the guy that was next to next door to me was an archaeologist. And he got the call too. And they wanted somebody to verify what this material was. So I actually went down there and looked at it with him. And since he was an archaeologist, he said, 
man, Dave, this stuff's too early for me. But we did find out later that this site was contemporary to early prehistoric humans here in Florida. But this was actually a bone bed. It was a verified bone bed like Kellogg Phil and like uh, Seminole Field. So a very important late ice age bone bed. This was the mammoth tooth and jaw that the girl found. Very important fossil here in Florida. This is what the animal looked like. And uh, the little girl was Sienna Sarte Swain. That was her name. She was only 16 years old. I mean, you kids, I don't know, there's probably not as many kids in this group, but if there's any kids out there listening or watch this, we encourage the kids to get out there and look for stuff. There is a little guy up in Michigan, 10 years old. He just found a mastodon tooth in Michigan. And I know one little girl that uh, out in uh, Nebraska, South Dakota, she was digging fossils in South Dakota in the Badlands and she found a saber tooth skull, saber tooth cat skull and brought it to the university. And it was one of the most important skulls they ever found. And one little girl that was 10 years old up in Canada was looking in the parking lot next to the museum where they found a, a Tyrannosaurus skeleton and they had missed the entire skin of that animal. And she discovered the first Tyrannosaurus skin. Kids are out there and they can find the greatest things in the world. Dire wolves, wolves that were almost twice as big as uh, the Alaskan wolves, giant bisons that lived here, early horses. And this is a dig site at Millennium Park in 2012, and they found a piece of camel bone with cut marks on it. So we believe that this site may have actually been used by prehistoric people during the end of the Ice Age. And we know from the giant bison that lived here, the large 10 foot horned bisons lived right up to the end of the Ice Age within the last 13,000 years. Giant ground sloth. This is an immigrant from South America. These are the bones we found at Millennium Park. This is what the site looked like with the bones coming out and washed out of the sediments. Prehistoric pigs. Prigs, I love pigs. You know, horses, they look up to us and cats look down on us, but pigs think we're our, our equals. So I kind of like pig fossils. I love the giant pig fossils. I did a lecture recently on terror pigs and walking whales. And so if you look up online on YouTube and you go in on the Tampa Bay Fossil Club site, you'll see my program I just did for Tampa Bay Fossil on terror pigs and walking whales. So if you get a chance, check that video out. Giant glyptodon, here's the guy in the flesh, well, almost in the flesh again. That's what the skeleton looked like. And remember, we find thousands of those little scoots at these sites. There's the giant tibia from the giant bison. This is the first bison ever found in Florida that was this recent of the giant bison with the 10 foot horns, brand new to science. Giant tortoises. This, this tor tortoise skull was found in Bone Valley and the edge of it on the on the bottom left side up there, the, the corner of it was damaged because a friend of mine, Joe Learned, dug this up at Bone Valley with his drag line and pulled it up and put it on the back of his pickup truck and gave it to the University of Florida. That's on display. You can look at that. And also prehistoric people's artifact. Ben Waller that I told you about earlier was the first guy to recognize paleo Indians that lived here in Florida during the end of the Ice Age. Dr. Sellards really was the first one, but was never recognized because the scientists didn't like that people were here during the end of the Ice Age. Now there's a group of people that lived here called Clovis people, that they had Clovis points, which are very distinctive. And there's a really big argument going on whether Clovis were the first people here that use these projectile points that had a flute down the center, or there were earlier people. And if you want to do one of my programs for Florida Humanities, I have one on uh, pursuit of the paleo hunters of Florida. And I'll tell you all about those prehistoric people. And here's Pinellas County and the little dots scattered all around there 
are these Paleo Indian artifacts. And this is what they look like. They're called Simpson points. And this is one close up to see what it was like. This is the kind of projectile people that were people were using during the ice age. I believe this one's a little earlier than Clovis, Clovis first. And a lot of scientists out west hate the thought that Clovis, New Mexico site was not the first people in North America. And they just found in, in New Mexico, which makes me laugh, human footprints that actually date 23,000 years old. And Clovis is dated at 13,000 years old. And if you want to hear more about that, get my program. Montbrook site this is the last site I'm going to talk about. It was found about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, it's near Williston, Florida. So it's a little south of Gainesville. And this one is the hot premier site. Five and a half million years old. Barbara Fight's saber-toothed cat skull was found in it. So we now know what that skull looks like. And all these wonderful animals like bone-eating dogs and giant camels lived here during that time period. And here's the skull that's called Barbara, it's called Barbara Fight's cat skull. It's actually a smilodon called Smilorhizodon phyti. And gonfotheres, and I told you about that weird elephants that lived here with the long jaws, like the one that was almost eaten by the shark. Remember that photograph? And if you want to see some really great fossils here in Florida over the last 150 million years have been collected, check out Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville. And there's a wonderful museum that's just nearly as good called the, it's actually the Bishop Museum now in Bradenton, Florida. So check some museums out. And if you like dinosaurs, we help the, it's called the Dinosaur and Ancient Antiquities Museum in Cocoa Beach, Florida. And that one, if you like dinosaurs, check that one out. Thank you guys for joining us with this program today. And Deborah, thank you so much again for inviting me. David, that was fantastic. I'm going to give you a round of applause. <laughs> wow. Everybody, you can unmute and uh, put questions in chat or speak them out loud. And I'm not going anywhere. Them. Ask all you want. <laughs> <laughs> we have some time. I mean, you know, this is supposed to end, but we let, let's take 15 minutes or so. Did we did we use a whole hour? Yes. I tried to keep it right at an hour. <laughs> that was so interesting. I didn't know any of that stuff. So I, everything you did, I learned. And it was just very fascinating. And I just enjoyed it very much. Thank you. I appreciate thank you for that. thank you for your life's work. <laughs> yes, that's a great way to put it. It's been a long road. <laughs> but I still keep going. I'm working on stuff there as you speak. Dinosaurs and mammals, you know. Somebody wants to know, Steve would like to know, where did they all go? <laughs> where is what who where who what where and when <laughs> I, I guess where did all of the ancient animals go well you mean like how did they become extinct and why they're yes, fossils today i think so yeah <clears throat> yeah there's a, a lot of theories you know the dinosaurs the big deal is an asteroid hit the earth uh you know 65 million years ago and killed all the dinosaurs but actually the way i look at it some of them died out but Birds are direct relatives of the dinosaurs, so they're still around. And I'm really pushing hard with this Titanus walleri as a dinosaur from Florida. <laughs> so I try to tie the dinosaurs with Florida fossils. Yeah. And also there was an, ex uh, an extinction event that was pretty big here in Florida uh, 34 million years ago. There was actually a meteor that struck uh, in Maryland on the <laughs> Chesapeake Bay. And we think that a lot of the extinctions that occurred 34 million years ago were related to that event. Mm. The other big extinction is the one at the end of the ice age, 13,000 years ago. And some scientists today are trying to say that there was a, also a, a meteor strike that may have actually caused that. And there's two possible smoking guns. There's a meteor crater in Peru and there's one in, uh, in um, Greenland. And so they're working on that. They think the one in Greenland might be a little too early for 13,000 years ago, but the one in Peru, the one in Peru, they're kind of leaning towards now. And if that's true, 
uh, then th that may have been an extinction event <clears throat> for the ice age animals, the ice age animals that lived here in Florida. Uh, unfortunately, it's pretty hard to pin down. I really think it was probably more of a combination of events. Uh, some people like to say it was called an overkill theory where these last ice age animals were killed off by prehistoric people. And they're finding out recently that that's probably not really accurate. The people I don't believe in any way were over hunting. There weren't enough people living here in Florida or North America to make a significant difference on those animals. But rapid climate change was an issue. And they went through two phases during that time period, just after the Clovis people were living here. The first phase is, is called the uh, Younger Dryas period. And North America went into an extreme cold spell. In fact, the cold wet weather was nine degrees colder than it is today. And with that, it was not only cold, it was extremely dry. And we believe that there was a lot of um, a drought that was associated with these uh, extinctions. And then the, at the climate spiked and it became what we call an altithermal, where it became nine degrees warmer than today. So you went from nine degrees colder and all of a sudden, nine degrees warmer than today. So that's like a, a 18 degree spike in temperature plus uh, the droughts that were occurring. So it could have been hunting, uh, meteor strikes, because we do find these little micro tectites in the early man sites that are 13,000 years old. So there was an event during that time period, but I think it was more likely an accumulation of these. And I even think like with the age of dinosaurs, it was probably this probably the same kind of thing, accumulated effect. The dinosaurs at the end of the age of dinosaurs were on their way out, the big ones, because uh, there were just less and less types of genus and species found in the upper layers of the rock layers where the dinosaurs are found. Did that help any? Yes. I think you might have answered a question that came in while you were speaking too. Um, that, that Peggy has asked, how did humans get to be in Florida if there was an ice age covering most of the continent? But it sounds like well i'll tell you what <laughs> that is my in pursuit of paleo hunters of florida which <laughs> I, think, I think deborah is interested in doing that. i am i am going to book this <laughs> so i got to be very careful how i answer that okay <laughs> but right now there's actually two lines of thought on how people entered north america and uh you can look those up online there's there one is uh called um the, the salutrian hypothesis and the other one is out of asia hypothesis and you can look those up and they'll give you a kind of a prequel if you guys do my lecture on in pursuit of paleo hunters <laughs> any other questions <laughs> any questions before we go anybody i'm okay. here hard to get us guys every now and then to answer all these questions <laughs> No, a lot of people have already left, but thank you so much, David. You're welcome. That was just fascinating. My pleasure. Oh, somebody just asked, can we just pick up bones, et cetera? Do you mean if you find mm -hmm. them, Steve? Right. Right. At Florida, you can collect fossils. Just keep in mind, uh, a lot of people uh, get confused. Um, public parks, county parks, state land, and federal land you, is illegal to collect fossils. And all the rivers our state land, but you can get a permit to scuba dive and collect fossils through the state of Florida just by contacting the Florida Museum of Natural History. They actually have a permitting program. And if you're a diver and you want to get into the rivers and look for fossils, because there's tons of fossils in the rivers, then you can get a permit. And the only requirements is that when you collect your fossils, after a year of collecting, you have to take them into Gainesville, show them the material. And if there's anything new to science or something they don't have in their collection, they have a right to keep that fossil. But if it's something that, even if it's a spectacular piece and they have many examples of it, they generally let you have those fossils. So it's only once in a really rare while that people end up. And then, you know, they, <laughs> it's a big deal. You're, they name it after you if it's important, you know, uh, they have it on file that you discovered it, you know, so you're part of the, the, the uh, 
exploration of this state, part of its history. So it's even if you have to part with something once in a while, it's just a well worth endeavor. And a lot of the beaches like shark's teeth, things like that, that's open game. Anybody can go out there and collect that. But be very careful of, hum of human artifacts, uh, fossils, like Indian mounds, those are strictly prohibited. Human remains, $10,000 fine for collecting human remains. In fact, um, every now and then I do lectures live, I'll have people bring me fossils and artifacts. And at once in a rare while, they'll bring me a human bone. And when they bring me a human bone, I have to report it to the state. So I tell them to go to the Florida Public Archaeology Network and give that to the state. And then the state will reinter it with the uh, one of the tribes in Florida to re what's called repatriation. And so you're not in trouble if you do that. If you don't know what it is, and I would say, hey, wait a minute, that's human. But it's a $10,000 fine if I don't report it. So, so really learn about what you're going to look for. And there's places out there you can, you can still collect here in Florida. And there's a couple of mines. There's one here in, in central Florida. It's called Vulcan Materials. Uh, it's in near north of Brooksville. And because of COVID, they've closed down. But once COVID is lifted, they'll start allowing people to go in and collect fossils in the mine again. Wow. All right, David, I think that's it. Thank you so Very much good. again. again. Thank you. And uh, well, we'll be talking soon. Take care. Thank you, everybody, for okay. coming today. We really appreciate your, your support. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>